Hello everyone, this is Jack from Visual Effects Hut and today I'm here to show you how to do advanced green screening. Right, so first off, I have um, a Sony FS7 but for green screening the codec which is wrapped in an MXF file is rubbish. So it's terrible for green screening and super slow. So what we want is we want to get this turned into Apple ProRes. So set it up to so I use the best quality that you can get in the camera internally so that is 4K, Cinema 4K and that is 422 um, but I'm just changing it to ProRes so we go QuickTime 422HQ and then just check all the settings and then it's all going to be fine and then just press OK so I've converted all the files today um, using the Apple ProRes 422HQ obviously the, be the better the codec so if you use 444 from like the Arri Alexa or red R3D format then you'll definitely get better keys. So we need to import our footage and then we need to set up our project. So I'm going to drag in my footage to create a comp automatically. I didn't pick which part of it I wanted so let's look for that now. I do adjust exposure halfway through on one of them to get the perfect log format so we're going to nick from here To about here. Lovely footage filmed in the back garden. No lights, as you notice, that's the point of these tutorials. There's loads out there um, saying about lighting the background and stuff, but which is true if you can, awesome. If you can't, Hollywood don't always. So, so we've got this. Um, it was filmed in S-Log3 on the FS7, so we need to correct for that first. I've got a LUT that I've already created for this occasion. So that's brought it back to a normal state. Skin tones are okay, not amazing, but this isn't in this tutorial. So what we want to do first is we want to pick key light. Um, so After Effects have got an amazing preset. That if you use this one, it does a lot of the work for you without having to get all the individual plugins. So if we drag that on, and we'll turn these off for now, just turn key light back on and what we want to do is we want to pick the screen colour a lot of people pick the one that looks the most green or some from around the edge but the actual a good tip is to get as close to the, the subject as possible so around here, somewhere around here as that's the colour that's the most important so right off the back we can see that that's a fairly decent key with because it's quick time as well that noise looks a bit better than if I I'd just used the default at uh, the FS7 so what we want to do is we want to just go scrub through the footage and just check if she goes over them lines but she doesn't which is great so we need to just create a garbage mat around them points so we've got that now then we just want to go to screen mat and we can see what's happening here so to adjust the screen mat we need to jump into screen mat and adjust the black which will get rid of these little dots down here let's try 12 let's try a bit more 15 Brill. so that's looking great Ideally you do not want to get rid of these hairs at this stage, so bringing back some of that might help. Um, and also just jumping between the two and adjusting that white as well. So it's nice and solid, but not too solid. So that's good, we've got all the hair information which is perfect for this stage. Some people try and get rid of it at this point thinking that the green needs to go at this point, but it doesn't. Yeah, ideally you don't want to mess with the gain and the balance but if you have to it's a good way to just fine adjust and deal with some transparency issues and then what we want to do next is just jump to the key cleaner so just by enabling this you'll notice that those hairs have gone smooth which matches the depth of field of the shot as well that's another thing people take you to film at like f4 or f8 but if you want a blurry background don't film at f4 and f8 because the shoulders will be sharp and it'll just look fake and then the last bit is to just jump on the spill suppressor which should kill all this green done 
Yeah, so we've got a nice decent key there and we can refine once we get our background on. So at this stage we want to keep it like this because we know that we've got all the hair information and there might be a bit of jittering which we can do by pressing reduce chatter. So if you see jittering around the hair just knock that on. I'm just going to put it on anyway. Then we want to chuck on our background. For this we've got some stock footage. Yikes, it's supposed to be 4K. Doesn't matter, blow it up. So I shot this at about F3 ish somewhere, 3.2 or somewhere. So it shouldn't be perfectly in focus and it wouldn't be anyway. So because it's flat, we don't need to do anything special, we just need to use the lens blur that comes inside After Effects. Drop that on. We wouldn't have too much so we could probably go up to 6 and I like to change this so it's more octagonal because I've got a few blades in that lens. It was only a Samyang but it just seems to be more circular than the other shapes. So that gives us a nice lovely finished look. Um, something you do notice with the Sony's in particular is edges are never perfect whereas this is where the massive cinema cameras tend to be a bit better. Yeah, so the edge around the hat, if we want to get rid of that, we can just use the shrink and grow and change that to minus one. Pulls the whole key back a little bit. And if we look at that now, it's definitely a lot better. If we push it back a little bit more, try not to lose the hair though, it's looking a lot better. It's too much. Minus five. This should be used subtly, but again, if you got a better camera, I'll probably do it with this. The edge is better. So I haven't got any of the um, Red Giant plugins, but if we did, we could create light wrap to create the, the effect that is more in that environment. And the only last final bit is to add motion blur. So if we pre-compose this move all attributes into the composition so that they're not here and then we just use any of the motion blur plugins I always find pixel motion blur works better but some people find that the CC one works better for them um, just drop that on because filming at a higher shutter speed means that um, when she, if she moves fast lines will be harsh and sharp whereas we want it to match what it would simulate in real life and you get a little bit of motion blur especially in film world yeah so that's how you get a nice decent key within after effects <laughs>